Pam Boyd, a SIO resident. As you probably now know, the administrator has resigned effective May 13th. You probably also heard that Clerk Flintoff has sued the Board of Trustees and that court date is coming up soon. This township is in a world of hurt. Are you awake? Have you been paying attention? How many Board of Trustees meetings have you been to? Why not more? If you had, oh, I lost my little dial. You'll have to go online to last night's. If you had, you would have seen for the last 18 months what residents have been upset about. The recall efforts were just a bit too soon as it may have turned out. Now we potentially have a laundry list of issues to recall. Maybe our township would be better served if the state of Michigan took over. The parks and rec and tap manager position that has been needed is probably a kicked can somewhere down to a future board of trustees and not in your near future. This bot is going to need to quell its own fires having to do with do we, don't we hire a new administrator and who in the world would want to come and work for Sio Township, also known thanks to a new attorney, Michael Homier, as dysfunctional, or in my words, dysfunction junction. Then we have the crisis in our finance department because the supervisor didn't take the well-educated years of experience advice on how to fix a problem from administrator rally. Why? Ego, stupidity, hubris. We also have the clerk's lawsuit, which is probably a last ditch effort to help her do her job. Don't understand how that could be? Pay attention and do your job. You should all be uh, voice your concerns to the supervisor. Several residents. Wake up. There is a fire in our township and committees are roasting weenies. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else here? Mm -hmm. Still here. Hi, my name is Kathleen Brandt. Um, I started attending board meetings because I became very alarmed about the behavior on the board. And so I started um, researching issues. I pay close attention now. I do lots of research and I try to come to meetings with fact based analysis. And this is what I shared with. Uh, the board members, especially new board members that had no knowledge of some of these things that have gone on. So I'll share it with you. Um, as of November 2021, the board had authorized this chart of full-time equivalents. One equals one person. So we had finance manager, finance director, deputy treasurer, utility yeah. billing a person all full-time positions and as of today currently current staffing if you haven't heard there's been a very serious family issue with uh, the, the uh, finance manager and you know we're sort of lucky if she's able to work half time is what i caught from the conversation so i give that a half-time position the finance director has been vacant since November 2021, and it's vacant because Ms. Engler took the deputy treasurer position at that point. It's been vacant for six months, okay? Um, utility billing, Shane, uh, Sean Slane just retired from that position. So the township has hired a half-time person for that position. 
So our current staffing level is we're lucky if we have two full-time equivalents. And this is the basis of the financial emergency in getting anything normal, accounts payable, employees payment, bank reconciliations, month in closing, prep for the audit. So I don't understand how anybody thinks that's nothing, anything less than an emergency. So you may wonder, why do I have 4.5 here? I have 4.5 here because in November, when Ms. Engler took the position of deputy treasurer, which is a board approved, it's a $50,000 position, she makes double that. Okay, so that in itself inflated the spending that taxpayers are. And as soon as she assumed that position, she indicated she did not have time to do all of the work of a deputy treasurer. So the board authorized hiring of a temporary assistant at half time. So as of November 2021, there was authorized 4.5. And then at that point, finance director became vacant. And so now we're sitting in a situation when there's not enough people to do the work. We're really concerned that employees are going to get uh, paid. There was a contract in place. This board last night decided to cancel that contract, which was providing those services to help us sustain the level of work. So another sharing of knowledge. So. The contract that was in place with a company called Raymond, they charged $9,000 a month for their services to take care of accounts payable and payroll. So an analysis of how much does that cost the township, they're roughly $56 an hour. They were contracted until the end of June. Um, if you do a comparison to the finance manager, and here we have to include benefits that's roughly eighty three dollars eighty three hundred dollars a month it's roughly fifty dollars an hour so raymond's not that far off from that cost of the township what's been proposed is that the deputy treasurer do some of this work well that salary is ten thousand dollars a month with benefits that's what it costs the township so that rate is 62.50 cents dollars per hour. That rate is higher than the Raymond rate. So how, how can we justify that we're going to keep it in house, but we really don't have enough people to do it anyway. And so if we don't have enough people to do it anyway, would it be possible that the deputy treasurer will now be working overtime? Lots of work, not enough people. Well, let's also be aware that when she assumed that position, that's, a non, that's a, an exempt position, so that now she's eligible to, for overtime. So her rate to the township is $75 an hour. I get that from Let's take away the benefits because it's already included. So she's roughly at $50 an hour pre-benefits. So we'll multiply that 1.5. She's at $75 an hour. Who thinks that she's not going to be doing overtime? Excuse this me, just a minute, Kathleen. Roy, I don't know if we started keeping time, but it, we've been, we've definitely gone more yeah, than you, three minutes. You need to finish up your next minute. Yeah, thank you so sure. much. Sure, so my, my point is that I'm here to educate, and so there's a, um, a rapper out of New York City that said, so you say you don't know, now you know. Please come to uh, board meetings. Please learn what's happening. Thank you. Sorry, we do have one public, uh, one person online with her hand raised, okay. Lillian Kay. Okay. Do you want me to start keeping time? Yeah. So, Jillian Kay can turn on your 
you are unmuted and you can turn on your camera for your comment. Yes. Yes. And there is one additional comment from um, Charles C. with his hand up. Okay. Thank you. Hi, I'm Charles Colson. I'm a SIO resident over in uh, Kensington Woods. I'm intending today mainly to support the AATA presentation. I was a member of the uh, public advisory group that has worked with the AATA planning for the ride 204 to 5 uh, throughout the last year, over the last year. And uh, just saying that I was uh, here to support the uh, presentation, I think uh, Forrest Yang may be going to be making. Uh, also, I would like to say I read over the uh, minutes that were posted for the last, I think the last meeting, and it was making some mention of uh, sidewalks and crossings. And one area I think that could be looked at for a street crossing is down at Oak Valley and Silo Church. There are lights there. There are people that walk along Silo Church and there was mention of uh, looking into the possibility of a path along the silo church from upland but there is no crosswalk at that light and with the traffic the way it is uh, it's a very dangerous intersection for pedestrians at one point there was a bus stop right at that intersection and i don't know why anybody would want to put a bus stop there because it would be very dangerous that's all the comments i have thank you Thank you. And that concludes the raised hands in the chat. Okay. <clears throat> Just real quick on public comments. On Sile um, Church and um, Oak no. Valley. Oak, 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 Oak Valley, Valley Drive. Um, that is a future phase of this thing that we're starting about talking about a little bit later in the process of connecting those subdivisions of Uplands and um, Meadowlands <clears throat> and Four subs actually connect into the city. I mean, it's going to be down the road, but we're hopefully first bite of the apple would be today when we start doing focus here, eventually spread that out and connect that community to um, the city of Ann Arbor and to, I mean, um, Oak Valley Drive and the library and all those. So I think that's something that's in the works. And also on the e-bike thing, e-bikes actually are allowed on state by state law on pathways. It's pedal assist. That's where it becomes sort of great, uh, a wide thing. So it's pedal assist. It has to do with how much power. I mean, so they it basically assist the pedaler. Um, but there are a lot of e-bikes that you know start out here and end up here. Um, so they are technically allowed. In, you know, at least in the county and in the state, that's what they allow. But it's ever evolving. So um, so stay tuned on that. So, so just then quickly, right on technically because those skateboards with the big wheel in the middle are not pedal assist does right. that put it in a different category i would think so okay so okay yeah because it has to be pedal assist as well. okay. that make them legal. 
Um, so with that, um, we'll close public comments. Um, move on to approving the minutes from March. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from the March meeting? Yes, I'll move. Mm -hmm. so is there any comments, changes for the minutes on March? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye is carry. Um, motion to adopt, adopt the agenda for today's meeting. Motion, Suzanne. Second. <clears throat> Second, Marjorie. Okay. Um, any changes, anyone's? Would like to see added. Seeing none, all those favor adopting the agenda say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay. Correspondence to tap. Um, I guess we didn't receive any. So moving on. Um, updated reports. Um, I think we can have all those. Anyone have any questions or comments on those items? As far as reports or quarter reports or township committee reports? No? Okay. Um, moving on, the action item is um, Saddle Ridge and Uplands Drive engineering contract. We did meet with um, Joe Maynard from Washington Engineering. He did some work out there, what, two or three years ago, Patrick? Yeah. Um, and we re engaged him. We met him out there to look at, sorry about this. Um, to look at what we have out there. So what he has done is sort of like the first phase, which is connecting um, Sile Ridge. Um, there's like gaps in sidewalks on both the north and the south side, probably like 200 feet. Like this developer built a piece, this developer built a piece, but no one ever connected the pieces together. So we want to do that, that's relatively simple. Then down Uplands Drive, which is goes from Sile Ridge south, there's bus stops on both sides of Uplands Drive put sidewalks on the east side and relocate some of the bus stops to make them safer um, and try to tie that all together. Um, Joe's going to work with a, AAA, ATA to make sure we, we look, locate these bus stops as safe for people crossing the road and that type of stuff. So the plan would be we'd hire them to do the design, um, they design it, get buy-in from the community, get buy-in from AATA, get the permits from the road commission and whatever else we need. So we package that all together and probably get that bid late this fall for work next year, or could be bid next fall, I mean next spring for next year's work. That's just the process it takes. Um, so that's what they requested. Um, there's a motion in here, but I guess before we get into those details, did anyone have any questions about this project or this, what were, this sort of scope of services that we're talking about today? Uh, well, uh, just maybe an overarching question. When sure. you say community buy-in, that's got to be the people, the HOAs, meetings, right? Such as, is there a plan already in place for that, or is that something we have to? We're still working on developing. I think we're still working on okay. developing it. Yeah. So gotcha. first, still, you know, generally you're going to put together some drawings, what, what it could look like, mm -hmm. have a public meeting, say, okay, this is what it could look like, and you know, get input and comments. Um, then, if you know, some things like, can we tweak this and move this? Um, that obviously get, get to the permitting agencies and say, okay, are they fine with it? And then once you get all that, then you can sort of package it up, send it out to a contractor and get engineering. And also in their quote is for construction oversight. So once we hire a contractor, the township would hire them to oversee the construction of the contract. Okay. And here again, all we do is make a recommendation and we'd accept it, make a recommendation if it's approved. And then it goes to the township board, and the township is the one that actually hired Washington Engineering. So, okay. and it was part of it was included in the budget that we um, took up to the township board for um, this year. Um, so it's all included in that. So, anything else on that? Is there, that was my question. Is there a motion to approve um, that action item? So moved. Support. I'll uh, support that. Support. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye is carrying. Um, so I guess with that, we're ready to move on to Forrest. Um, are they? Yes, he they? is here. I am going to try to make him a. <coughs> 
Oh, I'm here. Um, but if you can give control to Eva Greenstein. Oh, and he, okay. Yeah, he's going to do the presentation. Um, well, but anyway. Welcome, Forrest. Welcome back. I mean, you were here with us a few months ago. I forget exactly what month it was. So welcome back. Um, at this point, you know, I know you guys continue to move forward on this initiative. And we just had like an update um, what's going on, you know, AAATA and sort of, um, you know, get us involved because obviously the SIO is, uh, you know, involved with AAT. We have that service out here, sort of limited service compared to the rest of the communities, um, but at least we do have a service. So at this point, you know, we'll turn it over to you guys and you can help educate us and tell us, you know, what's the latest on your initiative. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, um, again, my name is Forrest Yang. I'm the deputy CEO with the right. Um, with me today, Yuva Greenspan from Left and Right Turn, the consulting firm who uh, are working with us on this project. And as Charles mentioned, uh, he's the one of the, our public advisory group members. And thanks for coming, Charlie. Um, so um, yes, as um, you know, Mr. Chair, you mentioned we were here last fall and we did a presentation on the plan scenarios. Uh, since then, uh, we have uh, reviewed all the feedback and incorporated this feedback into our planning process. So we developed draft recommendations. Uh, we'll, we'll give you a quick overview of those recommendations today. And then, you know, thanks for your feedback at the time and also for the feedback from the entire community. All right, I'm going to turn that over to Yuva for his presentation. Thank you, uh, Forrest, for that introduction. And I'll just pull up uh, my screen if I can get a quick thumbs up that it's sharing. Beautiful. Rearrange some things here to make sure I can see uh, see you folks. Uh, uh, thanks again for having me today. My name is Yuval Grinspan. I am the principal and lead, lead the transit practice at Left Turn, Right Turn. And as Forrest uh, alluded to, we've been uh, working with him and his team at the ride for the past uh, year and uh, a quarter or so uh, to develop this long range transit plan for the greater Ann Arbor Ypsilanti area. And really excited to be here and talk to you uh, about the plan. Uh, I want to acknowledge as well the, the uh, you know the contributions for from our public advisor group. It's really great uh, to have you here, Charles, and more broadly speaking, that that team uh, has has really provided us uh, a really solid sounding board as we moved forward through this process to make sure that uh, the ideas that we are we are thinking about and putting forward to the broader community, um, you know, has that customer experience lens to it. We started the project uh, beginning of last year and certainly have come a long way in that time. Uh, today, just want to go through and refresh you on that process that we've taken, uh, give you a, a, a summary of the things that we heard and the engagement that we did in the fall, which you were a part of, uh, and then how we've used that feedback to develop this draft plan uh, for the ride and ultimately get another, you know, any further feedback that you may have um, so that we can take that along with the feedback that we get from the broader public, stakeholders, staff, elected officials, uh, the board, and of course, our public advisory group to uh, to then move forward and finalize the plan for the Ann Arbor Ypsilanti area. All right, so uh, the project itself um, is looking at a developing a long range plan, a 25 year plan for public transit services in the greater Ann Arbor Ypsilanti area. And as, as you sort of see on the right hand side there, um, we're considering all things related to the network and where buses go and what frequencies where we've been looking at other types of transit and other types of technologies and services that we can introduce uh, vehicles and infrastructure to support it. And um, we've, we've certainly come a long way uh, in developing to, from where we started to where we are today. The plan uh, is being developed with a few specific goals in mind, which mirror many of the municipal goals uh, that we've, we've seen around the area. Um, and so the intention really is to design a transit system that increases social equity by improving access to jobs, education, and housing. Uh, a transit system that helps the environment and reduces air pollution by getting people out of cars and on transit. 
and supports existing and attracts new businesses uh, and spurring innovation and, and growth of our economy. And, you know, these goals were established based on, you know, the municipal goals that we mentioned, but very much echoed also what we heard from the community, stakeholders, and uh, customers, the board and the public advisory group uh, over the course of the project. And they've been used to help guide the decisions uh, and outcomes we hope to achieve. Uh, the project has been broken up into four phases. There was actually a, a phase zero, if you will, in, in 2019 when the ride started some of this work but had to pause it due to COVID. Uh, we resumed work on the plan in the start of last year, and that's when we formed that public advisory group and established some of our guiding principles that we've been using. In phase two of the plan, we did an analysis of the current state and future state to understand what's working and where how how the community is growing over the next 25 years. In phase three, we took uh, a wide lens of all, you know, many different kinds of ideas of how we can improve public transportation and started to narrow in on a, a set of scenarios. Ultimately, we brought four scenarios to the public uh, and stakeholders last fall. And I'll share with you in a few moments what we heard. And then now in this final phase of the project, we're, we've taken the feedback that we heard from that from the broader community uh, and started to narrow in on a single draft plan for the area and use the feedback that we'll get now to finalize or crystallize that, 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 um, uh, the plan for the area. So just uh, in a couple of minutes, I'm going to, or uh, I'll just over to the next couple of minutes, I'm just gonna share with you briefly what we heard from the public. You know, I mentioned we got a lot of really good engagement in the fall. We actually spoke to um, over four or almost 1,400 people last fall, and nearly 700 people responded to our survey. And some of the key themes we heard was really around a desire for transformational change. Um, people, you know, want to see improved transit, uh, and will get behind and support improvements to transit, that as long as we can connect it to the goals and demonstrate that the investments that they're going to be making will help us improve those goals that I talked about, improved social equity, reduced car usage and, and supporting our climate goals. We also heard from people a broad desire for convenience, reliability and dependability. Uh, and so transit that gets people where they need to go at all times of day. And so to that point, you know, really some of the ideas that resonated with the public and, and with the community were around high frequency transit and a high frequency network and better off peak services uh, and even faster travel uh, options using a bus rapid transit and other express services. There were other ideas too that we've incorporated into the plan, but the above were the, the key themes from that engagement. You'll find more information about all of the engagement and what we heard uh, on our project website, actually. We've, we've published uh, uh, on the ride.org. You can find your way there to the project website and there's a full what we heard report, which gives you more data and more background into all of these themes and sort of talks to you about the changes. In the fall, so I wanna talk now about the, uh, the, the details of the plan itself. In the fall, um, you know, I mentioned there were, we had pitched, you might remember four different scenarios and those four scenarios aligned with different levels of investment. The more investment you put into transit, the more you could, you, the more impactful the change you could achieve. And I mentioned that by and large, the response was strongly in support of that transformational scenario, the highest investment scenario. And so in developing this plan here today that I'm gonna share with you, that base, that transformational scenario was the basis for our work. And uh, what we've done is we've taken that and, and looked to make some uh, tweaks, uh, you know, like minor reductions in service hours. We've made some changes to the bus rapid transit to reduce the need for dedicated lanes with a view to try to manage some of the costs associated with building out the plan. Uh, we also focused on improving off-peak service in the near term because that was a priority where we heard from the community. And we looked at minimizing over travel overall travel times because again, that was something that resonated as being very important. Finally, for the service that we do plan to build, we're prioritizing areas with lower access to housing, education, employment, and healthcare. Again, to tie into the themes and the, the messages, the message that we heard from the community. 
So here, this page here summarizes or demonstrate shows you the, the network of what we imagine the ride could look like in 2045. Uh, and so all of the routes here have been optimized for travel patterns and travel times to and ensure that uh, areas with low access to opportunities have access to high frequency transit. And so you start, we start, I'll start by pointing out two full scale bus rapid transit lines. Those are the lines shown in red. They form the backbone of the system. And there'll be a combination of full BRT and bus rapid transit light. So sometimes in de dedicated lanes and sometimes in mixed lanes or shared lanes, creating strong east-west connections as well as north-south connections within the greater Ann Arbor Salenti area. And you'll notice it comes right to the edge of Sio Township at Jackson Maples. Other main routes are served by priority and express services shown in dark blue, which will have transit priority features and fewer stops to make trips faster. And finally, the other key features, two key features I want to point out on this map are the light blue lines. Those are your high frequency network. These are services that will be operated 15 minutes or better um, and will create better, faster connections and more reliable connections throughout the service area. Um, within the broader service area, which is in light green. And the broader service area in light green uh, represents other services that will be cover, used to cover those. So it could be a mix of on-demand services or conventional or, or local uh, uh, fixed route services. I also want to point out um, the yellow dots on the map. Those are transit hubs that we're proposing to build out uh, in support of the network and the, the redevelopment in support of the plan they'll create effective places for people to connect between services. And again, I want to point out a few features that might be particularly rele relevant to this audience and to your constituents. Um, you know, we, the, the service on Jackson to Zeeb, we're promoting including or suggesting including that as part of our high frequency network. So that's that light blue line you can see. So that'll have 15 minute service uh, by 2045. We're also looking at substantial investments and new services launching in Western Ann Arbor. So many services that your constituents might be looking at. So the new BRT line, which I talked about, does run right to uh, Jackson Maple through downtown. Uh, and so we'll connect customer or people there uh, to downtown as well as to downtown Ipsy. There's that express route connecting Western Ann Arbor using I-94 to Southern Ann Arbor as well as Northern Pittsfield. And in addition to the high frequency route on Jackson that I mentioned, we also have high frequency routes to the edge of the township on Miller and Maple. Finally, service along Sio Ridge and surrounding areas just west of I-94 will be improved with longer hours and better evening and weekend frequency. There's other elements of the plan. Uh, I won't have, to, don't have time to go through those in detail today, but I'll just point a couple of them out. So talked a little bit about improved off-peak services. System accessibility is a very important element of our plan. And so we're considering that as it relates to both the conventional as well as the A-Ride services. And so by improving the accessibility of our services, we're also hoping to improve integration between the services so that people with uh, disabilities have a choice of travel and freedom of access. Uh, we're looking at modernization uh, improvements, including to the fare collection systems, trip planning, and other systems too that aren't listed here. Uh, diversifying the bus fleet is an important feature of our plan. We're anticipating having a zero emissions fleet uh, by 2045. And um, finally, the other thing I'll touch on this slide uh, very briefly is around first and last mile solutions. And recognizing that you know a key part of building a successful transit uh, system is getting people to and from, uh, whether it's the new transit hubs or to the bus stops. And so we're looking at different ideas around how to do that. Um, beyond uh, the current service area, we're also uh, giving thought to regional connections. Um, so this, these are some of the, uh, the areas or opportunities that we've identified as being potential for demand to create uh, improved connections and develop express services between uh, outside communities to the, the, uh, the ride. Um, it's, worth, it's important to note that the specifics of this uh, and the build out of these will depend on partnerships and outside funding. Uh, 
And so while we've identified these ideas and sort of think there's a viability in terms of the demand from residents and, and commuters to these areas, this, the build out of this is subject to finding the right partner to uh, work with. So those are the key features of the plan. I'll just spend about three or four minutes trying to quickly go through the, the build out of it. So we have given thought to how to stage this uh, development over five year increments. So starting in the short term, 2023 to 2028, uh, the focus will really be on service improvements that require less infrastructure, uh, but yet still increase equity and grow ridership and set the groundwork for future stages. So here we have an, an express route pilot on Washtenaw, as well as um, minimum 30 minute frequencies on all routes during the daytime, including weekends. And you can start to see some of the high frequency routes being built out, including one of those uh, services I talked earlier, uh, right to the border there. Um, we, uh, we also have at this stage are starting uh, major capital projects to Ypsilanti Transit Center and Blake Transit Center and are starting the design work on the new garage as well as the design work for the implementation of the bus rapid transit uh, so that we can set, move, move forward with those in subsequent stages. So moving on to stage two in 2029, the second phase of the plan does include significant increases in service and expanded bus fleet. And so while we, uh, plan to eventually build a full BRT line on Washington Avenue. That's going to take time to plan and construct. We start by uh, uh, expanding that express service with better stops, queue jump lanes, and transit priority features to turn it into a bus rapid transit light service. And so that's that dotted red line. Uh, we're also introducing an express route on the north-south quarter from Briard Mall to the Plymouth Road Park and Ride and create priority services on the main Plymouth and Packard Ellsworth corridor. And in this phase, um, we'll be constructing that bus garage that I alluded to in, in phase one, as well as our first transit hub near Briard Mall. From 2034 to 2038, we'll have larger improvements to the service, uh, as well as to the backbone of the network. So here you see now we've transitioned that uh, BRT service on Washington Avenue to a full BRT in dedicated lanes. We also are now introducing that north-south BRT light from Briard Mall to the uh, Plymouth Park and Ride. And we're also uh, introducing that express route that I talked about earlier that uh, will pull, bring people from uh, the Jackson Maple uh, node uh, across the I-94 uh, through to Southern Ann Arbor, uh, Northern Pittsfield Township and back to uh, Ypsilanti. Uh, these upgrades coupled with the transit priority enhancements across the service area will make travel across the uh, the service area faster. And we also have now two new transit hubs built in this phase, the uh, Carpenter Ellsworth and of course the Jackson Maple uh, uh, transit hub in Western Ann Arbor. In the last phase, 2039 to 2045, we continue to uh, upgrade the backbone of the network and achieve that long, the, the final plan or the final vision that we had I'd laid out earlier. So here we have the full build out of the high frequency network, um, as well as the full build out of the priority services and the BRT network. So we include a combination of full BRT and BRT light on the north-south corridor from Briard Mall to Plymouth uh, Park and Ride. And we're also extending now that east-west BRT on here on Jackson to, uh, to the service. Sorry, to uh, uh, Jackson. Uh, we will build a new transit hub in the north there at Nixon Plymouth. And finally, as I mentioned earlier, we're expecting our fleet to be 100% zero emissions uh, by this point, creating an efficient, convenient, and clean way to get around. Uh, the last, you know, I just want to summarize uh, by talking briefly again, connecting back to our goals. So it's important for us to reflect and, and think about how the changes will will help us reach the the elements that i talked about earlier our service enhancements will mean more equitable access to high quality transportation for jobs education and housing with a 123 percent increase in service for low opportunity areas and a hundred percent increase else uh, across the board 
Uh, more broadly, our changes will grow ridership by 150 to 165 percent, thanks to 39 percent fa faster service, significant increases in off-peak service, and dedicated investments for innovation and modernization. We have more people using transit and fewer cars. Um, we're reducing transportation emissions by 7 to 11 percent and annual car trips by 6.9 million, uh, meaning less traffic congestion. And, um, you know, since uh, transit is a more efficient way to move lots of people, our community will actually require less infrastructure such, such as parking, reducing the overall cost of transportation. Finally, we're also helping businesses by helping workers get to their jobs faster and more reliably through the high frequency network. In terms of the financial piece, um, we have a, a plan laid out, a financial plan laid out that uh, we feel is uh, realistic, uh, uh, but also flexible. This slide here summarizes the operating and capital cost investments that are going to need to be done to, uh, to build out the service. Uh, operating costs includes things like employee wages, fuel and bus maintenance, um, and these are paid through local property taxes, as well as state and federal grants and passenger fares. The capital uh, costs um, are summarized on this slide, it includes innovation, technology, new vehicles, facilities, and bus rapid transit. And of course, a, a big part of the capital costs also includes state of good repair and vehicle replacement. So just making sure that the investments that we've made, as well as the, pre, the, the existing infrastructure and vehicle, uh, stays in good working condition. Uh, to fund these, we've are, we've we've broke. We're anticipating the sources as follows: so six percent of the total will come from existing capital reserves that the ride has. Uh, Forty-seven percent of the funding will come from existing state and federal funding programs that are stable and can be relied on for long-term investments. 31% of the funding will come from discretionary grant opportunities offered by the state and federal partners uh, that are specifically geared for bus rapid transit and state of good repair. Um, and then finally, 16% of the funding sources have not yet been identified, but uh, with 25 years as a horizon, we expect new and, and emerging opportunities to become available on the municipal, state, and, and federal level. And so, as I said, overall, we feel this financial plan is achievable, but also flexible should any surprises come uh, along the way. So that concludes the, the description of the plan. Uh, in just a moment, going to open it up uh, to to you folks to share with us what you think and, and ask any questions you might have. Uh, before I do that, to, uh, if I can uh, point you and any viewers, uh, there's multiple ways to provide your feedback and we wanna hear from as many people from the broader community as possible. I mentioned the website, the, the ride.org has uh, other information that we have uh, shared with the public um, and uh, you can also reach us by email, by phone, by mail. And sorry, on that website, there is a link to our survey. We'd like to get as many responses to that as possible. You know, it's through the, the feedback that we get and the voices that we hear that we're able to make adapt, uh, changes and adapt the, the draft plan that you saw today to, uh, to inform the final plan for, the, uh, for the, the coming days. So with that, I want to thank everyone again for your time and uh, open the, the floor to questions. Well, thank you, thank you for that presentation. First, I guess I'll open it up to our committee members if someone here has a question they'd like to ask. Um, um, okay. Question? Um, thank you for that presentation, it's very informative. I appreciate it very much taking the time to help us understand the 2045 plan. Um, obviously, we're sitting here in SIO, and if there's a way to maybe take a couple of minutes, a few minutes, and give us a little bit more of the details where SIO specifically is part of the plan. I understand you, we're going to build a high frequency from Jackson to Zeeb. I assume that's to connect to Blake, perhaps, um, in the early part of the plan. but. In the early part or even later parts, if you could just give us a little bit more about how SIO integrates with the plan specifically, I'd appreciate it. Certainly. Yeah, I'm happy to, to talk through some of those services in, in a bit more detail. Um, so, I mean, I'll start by saying that 
uh, the elements that, that you see here and the, the sort of the thinking that we've done around SIO and sort of the services that, that we feel, you know, to, to include it at this juncture are about integrating it and sort of the building off of the existing and you know, the services that are there and sort of where, where we feel um, we can do so within the confines of the current service area. Um, but that more broadly, and I know I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of the ride and, and forest, but the, the door remains you know, wide open to have further discussions around what other services uh, make sense and, and, and what, you know, what investments SIO as a township is looking to make in terms of a, expanding services, either cross boundary or even within the township. Um, in terms of the specifics within here, so yeah, so uh, I will point out that the, the, the services that we're, we've included and sort of the lines that you see are defined at a very high level intentionally. Um, many of these services won't be built out um, until 5, 10, even 20 years from now, and there'll be more specific planning efforts uh, to define the specific routing of each of those. Uh, so, for example, um, you know, the service that we, I mentioned earlier, um, you know, the, the, the key one of, you know, Jack, running along Jackson uh, up until Zeeb and then coming back and connecting into that uh, transit hub at Jackson Maple. And then, you know, from there, working its way through to downtown, the specifics of that routing, we have some, you know, conceptual thoughts around it, but it's not, it's not defined uh, at, the, at the street network level. So I, I don't really have much more, nor what is the intention to try to get to that level of detail right now. It's really just to talk about at a high level, what are the corridors that we're looking to provide service on and what are the service and at what level of services. So is it a you know high frequency service or is it a priority route or a express route or, or so on? So yeah, so I think that the key one, the key service that's extending into the township is uh, the service on Jackson. You know, the other elements I talked about, we have the, the high frequency network routes coming to the border uh, there on Miller and Maple. And I think, you know, th that's sort of it in terms of the specifics that we're able to share. I mean, I do want to point out that we also have, you know, the, the, the service along Sio Ridge and surrounding areas that's going to be improved uh, in terms of longer hours and better evening and weekend service. Uh, but that ultimately, I think the residents of Township of Sio Township will then just generally be, uh, you know, reap the benefits of just greater connections and improved service, connecting, you know, those elements of really Western Ann Arbor down to the to both, you know, to downtown is is there right now, but more to the south and across the uh, the, the the more the, the longer distances. Not sure if that addresses your question, or if Forrest, you had anything you wanted to add from your side. Well, I'd like to give other people opportunities to ask questions, but I guess sure. I have a quick follow-up. Uh, currently, or as Roy, you mentioned earlier, we have we do have AATA service out here, or we did. Uh, that was curtailed quite a bit at some point because of COVID, I presume. Is that right? I'm not really up on that. That's so, back to full service. Oh, it is. And so the line that, or the lines that are being run right now, would that be basically how you would start your build out is to just either use this line more frequently or dovetail off of that? Is that something you can talk about? Yeah, I, I, maybe I can start, but Forrest, feel free to jump in. I think, yeah, largely we're, we are expecting to, we're, again, we're not looking to necessarily through this plan change the service area within Sio Township so that um, the, the what you, as you alluded to, the, the service that's there right now is largely what we would be building off of. Okay. Thank you. Patrick, you your hand up? Yeah, uh, I'm wondering what a uh, transit hub means. What does it look like? I assume it's a physical facility? Exactly, yeah. So it's a bit of a, a, a larger location. Um, you know, the, the vision for it is that it would have other amenities. It could potentially have um, opportunities for first to last mile connectivity through bike share or scooter share, things like that. It might have opportunities for other uh, transportation modes to connect in, you know, if there's other shuttle services or, or trans public transportation services that want to connect into uh, the rides network there, there could, you know, there's the opportunity for that. Um, but then ultimately multiple uh, 
services from the ride would would be connecting in there and it would create a node through which you're connecting services for customers that effectively allows them to transfer and sort of easily move between service uh, between from one to the to the other without necessarily having to uh, you know cross major streets or anything like that the the last piece is around integrating to the surrounding neighborhoods. These are areas that are designated for growth and um, densification by the municipalities, and so we view it as also an opportunity to really um, create a, a transit friendly node um, that's well integrated to the surrounding community. It wouldn't be to the extent, like we're not talking about a facility as large as let's say the Blake Transit Center, uh, but there is funding allocated for each of these to build a, a, a structure. So it's, we're, not, we're not just talking like a, a bus stop. It's somewhere in between there. It's a, a smaller structure, if you will. Thank you. Do, you. do any of your buses have facilities to carry bicycles on them? Uh, Forrest, correct me if I'm wrong, but all the buses right now, or most of the buses right now, can carry two bikes uh, with the standard rack at the front. Is that, is that right, Forrest? Yes, that's correct. Great. I have one question. When you say the door remains open for discussion, uh, does that mean that as, as things change in South Township over the next several years that we can come to you all and say, this, this is the change that we've had. We'd like to develop a new route and we'd like to partner with you in doing that. Go ahead, Forrest. Sure, um, you know, as I, I don't think you can see uh, the notes on this map. Um, we, you know, at the beginning of this process, and you probably, maybe a little bit of background information on the arrangement with Sayo Township um, you know, between the AAT and Sayo Township. Right now, we're under a contract. So we provide a service and Sayo Township pays uh, through your uh, transit millage. Um, you know, what level of service uh, should be provided or what new areas need to be served, you know, we believe that's Sayo Township decision. So that's why we didn't want to jump in and come to some recommendations. But we have done some analysis in terms of the future demand, you know, where the growth is going to be. Um, but then that's why we want to leave that door open. You know, once we finish this long range plan, our plan is to come back to Sayo Township and have a you know, more detailed conversation about the needs, you know, transit needs in, in the township. So um, through that conversation, we can come to, you know, some agreement if you need more routes, more flex ride, more fixed route, or uh, more accessible service, or some other type uh, uh, services to meet the need of uh, the township residents, we can certainly, you know, get into this detail, the service planning, and, you know, costing uh, and implementation. Okay, thank you. There, mm -hmm. um, thank just you. to let everyone, uh, on the call and in person now, Roy had to leave uh, due to a prior commitment, so I will assume chair responsibilities. Um, is there, or are there any other questions from members uh, in the room? Patrick. Uh, I see here on the funding sources, you've got unidentified sources. And then I think I also heard that you would be looking for money from the township as part of partnering with you on new routes. Uh, do I have it right? So, so uh, sorry, I got a bit of an echo there. Uh, yeah, so in terms of the unidentified sources, uh, we, we do have some ideas for where those could come from and sort of have been uh, working through those ideas with, uh, with the staff. And ultimately that'll, that'll work its way to the board first. Uh, for the ride, but it includes, you know, a variety of me mechanisms through, you know, uh, you know, different forms of of, of, of land value capture taxes, things like that, um, and as well as grants and other funding, you know, funding sources from uh, federal and state governments. Uh, and then, in terms of your question around cost recovery for services to, you know, partner municipalities such as SIO. Yeah, those, as Forrest alluded to, are, are through the, you know, the agreement that you have in place. Um, so n 
because you know you you folks are uh, not uh, member uh, municipalities within the ride. Uh, you know, one of the three member municipalities. Your services are provided through a a service delivery contract, which you know. You know, I'm not privy to the specifics, but I would assume it's you know tied to the the number of hours or or whatnot level of service that you guys are 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 requesting uh, to the ride, and so any growth to that would would be through a similar arrangement. I think we have time for one more question. I'm not seeing any. Uh, I'm sorry you guys can't see me on the screen. I'm kind of manning the technology behind. So uh, thank you, Forrest and Yuval, for the presentation this afternoon. We really do appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thanks thank for you. having us. Appreciate it. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Uh, just turning back to our agenda, um, just wanted to welcome our newest TAP member and provide uh, Patrick an opportunity to introduce himself. And again, welcome to the TAP committee. Well, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Patrick McLaughlin. I'm the recently appointed uh, member of the Board of Trustees. And um, the supervisor asked me to act as the liaison with uh, TAP uh, to take Jane's position, uh, which are incredibly large shoes to fill, so I uh, look forward to any kind of assistance you can give me to make sure that I'm effectively communicating back and forth between the board and, and this organization. Um, I've been on a listening tour pretty much since uh, I was asked to uh, be the liaison for TAP. Some of you may know me from the Parks Department, uh, where I served for several years. Uh, Others may know me from just going on Saturday walks. And uh, I'm really excited and impressed by what I've learned about your organization. I just had a kind of a, you know, a peripheral uh, exposure to it, just kind of keeping track of what was going on with uh, the paths and parkways. Yeah. And um, it's, uh, it's very impressive what you've accomplished. And it, it's exciting that, you know, in terms of the parks, too, I think one of the things that's most gratifying from my perspective is for some time we were just discussing things. Now that you can see tangible results, I think that that is just a tremendous sign to the community that we're actually making progress, making good use of the resources that are provided to us, and that they can see that and then take advantage of it. I think the Marshall Park pavilions going up, kind of an exciting process, seeing the Pathways going down Zeeb, extending closer and closer to the Huron River. It's, it's really tremendous. So um, one of the things that I learned after meeting with Roy and uh, with Chris Nordstrom uh, from Carlisle Wortman, just to try to get some background information on, just to try to get smarter about what, what you're accomplishing and what kind of projects you have in mind. And it became apparent to me that um, it's important to report back to you regarding budgetary issues. The pros plan is coming up. It's going to expire at the end of this year. As you know, that's a five-year plan that needs to be renewed and redrafted. And there's a lot of uh, planning that goes into the fact that you have to you know, get public uh, input about it and have a 30-day review. And, and the situation is a little uncertain. Um, so I did email the administrator asking him to clarify uh, the status of the funding for the pros plan so that uh, Mr. Nordstrom could, you know, start that process of drafting that plan. And as Kathleen and uh, Pam mentioned, uh, the administrator uh, put in his resignation at the, the meeting last night in a surprising uh, development, to say the least. He's still going to be here another 30 days. And hopefully I will get some information that I'll be able to share with you from him regarding the budget status. So in the meantime, uh, all I want to say to you is, um, you know, please help me be effective. Uh, if there's something that I should be communicating to the board that is an important issue, please let me know what it is. I'm not aware of it. And I'll do my very best to uh, be a good communicator on your behalf to the board and hopefully for from the board to you as well. Well, 
thank you very much. Well, and you definitely did t talk on a little bit of our next two items under old business uh, was a funding update. Did you have, um, and I do have this as you, Patrick, uh, anything more specific on funding update in general? Uh, well, not really. I, I don't have any specific numbers or anything like that to report back. Um, it's sort of in a transitional phase, uh, as, as Kathleen mentioned. You know, there's some staff shortages, and we need to pull together our resources. And uh, it's been taxed recently because of the budget, which is required. And uh, so things are settling down, and hopefully I'll have more additional information to share with you the next time we meet. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, and then... I have a question. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, so... I think Roy uh, was part of the meeting yesterday and sought approval of our budget request for uh, Sio Ridge Road and for Zeeb. Did that uh, I'm, I'm unaware of where the status of that is, Patrick. Okay. I'd, have to, I'd have to look into it. Okay. I'd be happy to find out. All right. Thanks. Next item is collaborating <coughs> with the Roads Advisory Committee on the Collector Special or SAD. Patrick, other Patrick. Other Patrick, yes. <laughs> we've got two Chris's. Then I have to like maybe use your last uh, name initials or something. We've got uh, two Patricks and two Chris's. Well, things will never get confusing. <laughs> All right, so Patrick. Yes. Um, so Roy and I both serve on the Roads Advisory Committee, and. Uh, they're uh, trying to figure out how to help the township do a better job of taking care of our roads and helping communities uh, deal with local problems in their own neighborhoods. And one of the principal tools for doing that is SADs. There is, a, I think we've mentioned this in the past here, there's a collector SAD that was passed nine years ago. It's coming to the last year, last distribution and what we want to do is put together an ad hoc committee from SIO, I mean from SIO, from, from, uh, from TAP and a couple, three representatives from the Roads Advisory Committee to put, uh, put together a case to extend that into the future. Uh, we need to document all of the stuff that was done with that money. We need to document what will happen in the future with that money. And we need to present it to the uh, Board of Trustees around August. So we think the best way to do that is to get the two committees that have the most at stake in this process, and that's Rose Advisory and um, TAP, because we get 10% of the money that's available for our pathways. So I'd just like to propose that uh, we create such a committee and looking for uh, self-recommendations for two or three people. Uh, Roy and I will do it if there's another person. Great, if not, that's fine too. Patrick, I have a quick yes. question. Yeah. What is the collector? I know what a special assessment oh, yeah. is, but like, what's special about a collector? Okay, assignment? so the collector roads are what we used to call orphan roads. Nobody owns them. So there's roads that the township owns, there's, there are roads that uh, neighborhoods own, there's roads that, the roads that the federal government owns. There's roads like, and these are the ones that have uh, received, uh, been helped with the SAD, Marshall Road, East Delhi, West Delhi, North Delhi, Streeter, Liberty, Knight, Park, Platte, and Liberty. And these are all, Liberty's in there twice, these are all roads where people come to them to get from their neighborhood to shopping yeah. or to get to the neighborhood to get downtown. So, so Mark, I'll just add in that yeah. like the collector designation is kind of a, a function <coughs> of the specific roadway. So if you were to type collector road, you know, Michigan roadways, there's a very specific definition as to how those roads feed into one another and the overall transportation system itself so yes you do have those local roads and how they are really collectively funded um, whether through federal dollars or 
excuse me, state dollars, and then those ownership, as Patrick alluded. So. And the other thing that happens with this money is for communities, neighborhoods, HOAs that have passed an SAD, money from this collector road SAD is used to repair their roads. So in our neighborhood, we did an SAD about nine, ten years ago, and once every year or two, a company comes in and fills in the cracks and makes for sure that our road stays, let's put it this way, degrades more slowly. Right. It's all roads degrade, <laughs> but what we're trying to do is make sure that happens more slowly. So there's a lot of positive functions from this, but I don't think most of the board knows that now, and we need to make the case. So Sio Ridge is an example of a collector road? Yes, it is. Yep. Okay. Yep. Liberty is an example. Liberty? Okay. Liberty yep. and Pass Z or all of Liberty? I think all of Liberty oh. in the township. Because everybody feeds into it and okay. nobody is really responsible for it. Oh. And so the, the idea, this is an idea that Luke Kidder came up with is this SAD would be a great way to provide funds for uh, those roads that nobody really owns. So I've got a Suzanne, little... Suzanne, you've got the same look. Well, I have the puzzlement of acknowledging full wholeheartedly that Liberty Road, uh, Liberty is a federal aid road. What is it really? So, oh, oh, of course it is. The whole way? <laughs> Functionality, like once you get up to a certain point, no. So I think, Patrick, what would be really helpful is to really classify the, like, if somebody were to look at their property tax bill, they're going to see the special assessment district on there. What is that functionally being spent on? Like, you know, I work in transportation. I knew that we had an SAD, um, but I know that like Parker is a major collector, but that's also a county designation. And so I think it would be helpful for everyone to probably get a little primer on um, the ins and outs of transportation funding and the classification because it, it, it is different. The township does not own any public roads because the road commission owns them, um, unless it is like within a subdivision that is private. Um, so that is a, a huge differentiation for everyone and everyone may not fully understand that. And so I, I think that would be really helpful, Patrick, for us to you got it. have a little bit of more conversation. I think we'll invite uh, our recently <laughs> departed chair. Yeah. yeah, seems like Roy would be a, a perfect person to explain all that. All right, so we want to hold on this uh, proposal or? Well, are, have... are there individuals around the room that would like to work with Roy and Patrick on this kind of um, ad hoc committee? I would be interested. My worry is, though, I'm not sure how much really I can bring to the committee other than to just learn from you guys, which I'm happy to do. Yes. But I don't want to take a spot of somebody that could be actually seriously productive. But I, mean, I, I so I think that you know you may represent a larger portion of our community than maybe what you realize because okay. not everyone is a former road commission manager. Sure. So okay. you know your perspective <laughs> may be helpful because most of us don't. You know, we don't think about jurisdictions of the roads. We just think, I want to get from point A to point B. I don't care who owns it. I just want it in good shape. Sure. So I'll be happy to be Terrific. part of it unless somebody has a real strong feeling about it. Uh, you know, be great. I have a strong feeling of support. Okay. <laughs> good. Wonderful. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Um, and Chris, I believe, Chris, I'm sorry, Chris Nordstrom, you are on for the next two bullet points. Could you provide us with a Parks, Recreation, and Open Space Plan update? So the there isn't much news in the Parks, Recreation, and Open Space Plan up right now. Um, as I mentioned a couple of months ago, uh, the board did approve the budget, but the funding source for that, to pay for the, the plan, was not established. So it's been on hold for a couple of months now. I'm hoping to, that that's something that will show up, and, and Patrick, I would certainly welcome your help with that. Um, we're okay right now. Uh, you know, we're definitely the whole. The goal was to get this started as early as possible, so we could get as much public input as possible across the summer. Um, I 
I don't want to push it back too much farther if we can help it, because it's, it's going to be a significant update to the plan, and the more time we have, the better off we are. So that's about all I have on, on pros. Um, the pathway evaluation system update, we had a really good working session a week or two ago where we actually went through and went column by column on the spreadsheet to see you know, what makes sense, is there anything that needs to be tweaked, uh, you know, we had some great suggestions around, around the board. Um, those, the suggestions that you made have already been implemented. Um, I've got my GIS specialist helping to clean up the map a little bit more so it'll be a little bit better the next time we, we meet. Uh, I think the goal was to actually do a presentation next month right. at this meeting so we can really, I can show the public exactly what's going on, try to condense my presentation a little bit more than I did for you folks, and, uh, it, but then once that's ready and you're ready to approve it, then we can put it out for public uh, input from there. I have one comment that I forgot to email you about, but now that you're talking about there. it. Like, oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> we talked about uh, removing the Strava data column, I think. Um, it, it, was, it was an option. It was um, an option. Like, is it still there? It, I still it? have it in there, and, okay. and that's something that we can, you know, depending on what, what the group feels, we can either leave it in or take it out. And I would suggest we we leave it in for now see what the public thinks too if there's you know a strong opposition to it we take it out if there's strong uh proponents for it then we leave it in um, One, um thought i had is whether or not that um i think because drop is like a you have to have the app or device yeah, right? right right um and so i wondered if that might continue to sort of sway us in favor of people who could either afford the app were new to download it or the device as opposed to people who, like yeah. I'm not sure that it's actually an unbiased representation of activity around the community, around our township. And so um, that was one concern that I had about continuing to include it. Yeah, we, we've had that discussion and you're absolutely right. You know, it, it is a question of, are we supposed to wait our trail development based on a group of people who may not even be Seattle Township residents um, who, you know, they're just taking these routes and does that really reflect what Seattle residents want? On the other hand, it's really an objective, or at least relatively objective gauge of the, this is where people are going, whether they are Seattle residents or not. So when you look at it in terms of the overall impact on the score for a particular route, um, those those points are not going to probably are not going to make make or break a project, um, but it is something that gives you an idea of where people are going. And in that respect, I think you know the more information we can gather, the better off you are. Um, you know, is it something I would base my entire network on? No, but as a small component of the overall evaluation system, I think it's got some value. So. I would suggest we leave it in for now, see what, what the public thinks. Um, I definitely want to try to stitch together a static map that we can use. And again, like, like with some of the other maps that we're putting together, address it once a year, just update it so that you're seeing. So it's reflecting what's actually happening now. Um, but other than that, I, I think it's, it's a decent tool to include. Okay. Um, and, and I just, oh, sorry, sorry. One thing I just want to clarify, I'm not um, at the, Township resident versus not township resident hadn't even occurred to me. I was more thinking of people who maybe um, there might be an economic differentiator there right. around people who have phones, download app, car to transport them to whatever the walking path is. Um, so there might be some sort of bias in favor of um, different economic classes potentially that. You know, sure. May not reflect what's, what's no, I, I, I completely agree with you. Um, I mean, I, I don't have Strava on my phone. Right. <laughs> that doesn't mean that I'm not taking certain routes. And it doesn't mean that I'm going to be taking the same routes as somebody else in the township who may not have Strava. But what it does do is it says, hey, for the people who downloaded this app, and the, the people that download this app are usually active pedestrians, active cyclists. Mm -hmm. 
these are the routes that they're taking. And so in that respect, it just gives a snapshot of what that particular group shows. It doesn't minimize other uh, populations who may not have access to the app. So it, I, again, if it, were, if it were a larger component, I would have the exact same concerns you do. Uh, but as a piece of the, the, the bigger pie, I think there's enough value there to, to warrant inclusion in the overall score. And Marjorie, I'll just add, I use that professionally. It is not meant to be the panacea, but it is to better indicate kind of like some of those kind of longer commutes because we don't collect non-motorized data in the state of Michigan. I was doing that previously, but there's very, very, very little of that information collected. Um, so barring that, and we have access to Strava, there are very few tools that we have that we can actually want to purchase because it is very, very expensive for any singular municipality, excuse me, singular municipality to purchase. So um, I, I agree with Chris, yeah. yeah. Totally understand that. I think my concern is still just like, if we're looking at issues of equity, this doesn't feel super equitable um, to include it. And so if we're sort of saying like, well, we might not even, it might not even swing a score that much in one direction or the other, then I'm not even and, sure you know, that. I think there's a difference between, and I've used like scoring matrices, you know, federally, like a lot of the MPOs are required to do that but it's a tool. It is not meant to be the final determination factor for any singular project. Um, and I think that some of the discussion that we'll probably have next week was, you know, some of the major population centers. Well, if you look at potentially Z road pathway, it wouldn't score very high. Um, and so obviously we've made, you know, policy level decisions and recommendations to the board where there had to be some kind of recommendation made long-term, but I definitely hear you. It is definitely top of my mind as well. Thank you. Uh, Patrick. I would feel a lot more worried about it if we didn't have 80 variables that we're looking at. Yeah, it's a lot. It is a lot. I so there's a whole agree. lot of data there. I, I, and I don't think that plus three is going to matter that yeah. much. But it might highlight something that yeah. gets our attention uh, in terms of the, the details. I wonder if we could also consider, I mean, this would be a whole other can of worms, I understand. So I'm just spitballing here. But right, like, um, something that's not included in a scoring matrix or a scoring uh, rubric, but rather data that is available um, to consider, right? So mm -hmm. that might be a, a, a sort of a supporting, an opportunity to have supporting data available that's yeah. not necessarily part of an actual score mm -hmm. that is calculated. Like sense. car ownership rates. Like what? Car ownership rates. Oh. I don't, that might be a thing. That, that is census collected. So, you know, and I think that we can probably, you know, put a pin in that, but know that we definitely want to make sure we build enough time in our conversation next month to go through those and look at other ideas that people have around the table to make sure we're really not missing an opportunity and then get that out for the public so that they can provide us with their recommendations. Yeah, it was super helpful. Thank you so much. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, thank you, Chris, and the team okay. that worked on um, getting that kind of very, wonderful and robust draft to uh, group. Are there any other questions for Chris at this time? Okay. Thank you, Chris. Uh, next item, new business. I don't have anything there. Uh, and then wrapping up, creating to-do list, yeah. Patrick S. So I've got uh, forward the action items uh, about SIO Ridge, the action item about SIO Ridge to the board for the action about the item about the ad hoc committee uh, for the collective roads to the road commission and uh, supervisor so that they're aware of what's going on. Ask Roy to uh, provide a primer on the road system and then Patrick will find whatever information he can about uh, funding. Did I miss anything? That includes the pros plan that Chris needs um, feedback on. We need to. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I have to keep that on the agenda. Is there anything we can do to move that, Chris? I mean, uh, sure, you're doing everything possible. But. Well, the, the clerk and the supervisor are both aware. Um, it hasn't shown up on the uh, the agenda the past two three meetings. So, I guess again, Patrick, I'll lean on you a little bit there. Yes. To, 
Yeah, I, I'm trying to get that ball rolling. Yeah, and, uh, and it is. It is just a matter of deciding, does it all come from the general fund? Does it come from the paths and parkway, or <laughs> parks and pathways millage? Well, uh, does LPC have to put in a, a bit towards this? And you know, I can see arguments all the way around, so it's really up to whatever the board is comfortable right. with. And uh, that's a priority for me to get back that information to you, Chris. Okay, thank you. Just yeah, a question on the procedural workings that you could help me understand maybe a little bit. Uh, what uh, Chris was just talking about, does it also help if TAP members and the community send an email to anyone in particular on the board to say, hey, the pros plan is important, can you please consider it? Does that bring any movement to where it might land on the agenda or not really? It's, it's certainly uh, the top by priority list. You know, and uh, as you know, my duty is to report back to the board what your concerns are. So, I mean, you certainly can do that. You can do it to me personally if, you, if, if you'd like to. Uh, but it's got our attention. I was just thinking in helping you. That's all. Yeah. I wasn't trying to get around or do any of that. I just I didn't know if that was helpful at all. You know. Uh, I'm really not sure, to tell you the okay. truth. You know, I'm just kind of feeling my way through this new position yeah. for me. Um, I, I certainly wouldn't object to getting any kind of uh, suggestions that you might have uh, to help me prioritize what's important to you. Okay. Um, so I'm wondering about a possible letter from the affected committees mm -hmm. signed by the chairs. So this is important. We're at a critical moment in time, and we hope you can get to this soon, or at the we, next meeting. We yeah, because we've already, right, haven't we already recommended that the board we have, approve yes. the funding, we and so now two the board just has to put on the agenda. We've, yeah, yeah. Right. so yeah, it's just a matter of getting the board to take the action to approve the funding, right. and decide where it's going to come from. And the first thing that I did, actually, after meeting with Chris and uh, with Roy, was try to get some clarity on where we are with the budget items. You know what the revenue sources are, how much you know we can anticipate getting and when, and I just haven't gotten back any feedback from that yet. But I hope to soon. And you know, I actually, I don't. I've only been to one board of trustees meeting. I go to more in the future, but I have to imagine their agenda. They can't get to everything on their mm -hmm. agenda, uh, even if they wanted to. So, what just, time do you get home, Pat? <laughs> There's been some lengthy meetings lately. Yeah, so again, I just didn't know if yeah. more voices might just help move something up the ladder. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully I'll have something to report back, you know, that'll 